This week I have an issue with the powder melting. I'll explain why the first idea I tried won't work and I'll share the one that did. So before I get started, I'll tell you up front that there isn't much b-roll in this video. The laser is so bright that it's really hard to film, and I only have one pair of laser glasses and I need those for my eyes, so I just didn't get a chance to film much with my phone. I ended the last update video with a problem. The powder was pure white and was not melting with the laser. I needed to solve this before I could move on to anything else. My first step was to harness the power of the hive mind and consult the Discord server for a while. After some discussion, we had settled on a solution. I was going to mix carbon powder with the PLA powder to darken it. After I had it in hand, though, someone new joined the Discord. After getting caught up, he frantically hailed me and voiced his concerns. He brought up a good point that carbon powder is basically pulverized charcoal. This means it is extremely flammable. On top of that, PLA powder is not exactly fire retardant so I thought it might not be a good idea to mix them and then shoot it with a laser to heat it up. He did have a good alternative idea though. Toner from a laser printer is a very deep black, and according to the guy in the Discord server, it has the same polarity as paper, or something like that. So the toner should bond to it well. I opened up my uh, 2D printer and sacrificed the toner cartridge. This was a really messy process. It's a good thing that my cat is already mostly black. I mixed an arbitrary amount of the toner into the powder until it was a nice gray color. Then I set up for the first real test. I sliced a model of a basic cube, post-processed the G-code, and hit print. In a later video, I'll go over the workflow I'm currently using and talk about the post-processor. Against all odds, it seemed to go off without a hitch. The cube came out vaguely resembling the model I sliced. Of course there were blobs of overmelted plastic from the laser power being too high and wobbly lines from the loose kinematics, but let's just take a moment to appreciate how a hobbyist SLS machine is capable of even producing parts. After that successful cube, I decided I had to try a Benchy. I'd only mixed up a small amount of powder and I was quickly running out, so I had to scale it down a fair bit. And after about 40 minutes of printing, I dusted it off, and there was a centered Benchy looking back at me. I am so thrilled that this is actually working. Before I tell you what I'm working on next, I want to let you know that I started a Patreon. Prototyping this printer is expensive, and any support you can give is very much appreciated. You can get rewards like behind the scenes content and early access to my videos when I get them done early as well as you can get your name at the end of my videos, like sort of like credits, like you see a lot of other people on the site doing. The next thing I have to work on is dialing in the laser power. The Benchy was done at 50% power and the cube was done at 100%. These were just wild guesses and I have no idea the optimal power setting. I did try another Benchy at a lower power, somewhere around 30%, but it and it looked like it was working, but when I tried to remove it from the print bed, it just crumbled back into dust. But before I can dial in the laser, I have to rework. <laughs> oh, boobles. But before I can dial in the laser, I have to rework the motion system. <laughs> boobles. But before I can dial in the laser, I have to rework the motion system. There's too much slop in the current setup, and I won't be able to tell what's an inconsistency from too much power and what's from excess wobbling. I'll discuss the new frame in a later video, but here's a quick preview of how it's looking so far. I took this opportunity to rebuild the whole thing from the ground up using a laser cut frame and machine hardware provided by some of the amazing people in the Discord. Again, more on the new frame and everything in a later video. That's really all I have for this week. To summarize, toner mixed with PLA powder dyed it a nice gray and cuts down on the possible explosion risk. If you like this video, hit the thumbs up. If you didn't like it, thumbs down. If you have any thoughts, feel free to leave a comment below or better yet, join the Discord linked below. That's all though, I'll see you next time.